Hello guys, this is Pavelos from Laravel Daily and in today's video we will create a demo project with multi-tenancy in Laravel. What is multi-tenancy? I have an example for you. Uh, we have an admin panel, a management system for hotels and bookings. And let's imagine we have two agents, John and Brian or John and Sally, whatever, and uh, each of them should manage their own hotels and their own bookings. So currently we have two bookings by John and two, two hotels by John and two hotels by Brian. So what if inside of the organization uh, John works with Hilton Hotels and Brian works with Radisson Hotels or vice versa. And same with bookings. So one would add booking and only uh, the person who added the booking actually sees that and the other agent doesn't see. So that is kind of a multi-tenancy, uh, which means basically every user sees only their own entries and not others. You have examples like Laravel Forge or any actually uh, any website uh, with a huge domain, huge database, but you have only your own part, your own mini database with your stuff and that is multi-tenancy. So currently I have a project uh, generated, actually that's the first uh, public project generated uh, with Quick Admin Panel new version 2019. I will put that on GitHub uh, so you can see the code generated, but it is not multi-tenant. So it's just a CRUD for hotels and CRUD for bookings, which is empty for now. Uh, so that is my local machine. Uh, and now we will make it multi-tenant without Quick Admin Panel, with just coding uh, with observers. So there are a few ways to do that multi-tenant thing, and I will show you the straightforward way with observers and uh, global scopes in Eloquent. And then we will uh, make it better, uh, flexible with trades. So we will reuse it for bookings. Let's begin. So for now, hotels uh, don't have any field for who created that hotel. In the database, if we see the database, it looks like this. So first, what we need to do is create it by user ID. We add that field and we do the migration. So PHP artisan make migration add created by user ID to hotels table. Okay, we are in PHP Storm and we need to add that field into our migration. So unsigned integer created by user ID uh, nullable because we do have records already. So in order to migration not to fail, we make them nullable now, but we will change that later. And then we add foreign key. So foreign on the same field references references ID on table users which is default Laravel table on users okay and then we need to add that field as a fillable in the model so hotel model and the fillable we add created by user ID and then let's create a relationship as well in Eloquent, just in case maybe we will need it in the future. So belongs to user class with a field created by user ID. Okay, and we launch the migration. Okay, we do PHP artisan migrate successfully, and we should have new field created by user ID. Okay, that's step one. Now we need to make that field automatically filled in uh, with new hotel. So for that, we create an observer. PHP artisan make observer, uh, hotel observer. That's one way of doing the multi-tenancy. I repeat, uh, first is with observers, and then I will show you how to do that with trades more flexibly. So we add an observer. It should generate the file app observers hotel observer and we're interested in created thing. So created hotel created by user ID uh, equals auth ID. And let's check if auth actually exists just in case. Mm -hmm. and hotel save I think like that 
Next step is to register our observer in App Service Provider. Service Provider. Uh, I think it's the syntax is this from what I remember. Hotel observe and then hotel observer class. And now let's try it out in the web. We go to our hotels form. Let's try form filler. Just random stuff. Submit. We have our hotel and let's see if that actually is filled. Yay, we have created by user ID equals two. So now the first step is done. We are actually observing the new hotels and assigning the current user ID uh, for the hotels. Next step is to filter the data and to filter by user. We return to the model hotel and we need to add a boot method. So public function boot. Every model has a boot, metal, um, boot method and first we need to call parent boot and then we can do whatever. Uh, next thing is static add global scope and we will add global scope with name created uh, hotel created user for example <coughs> and add function query with return query where mm. no it's not query function I think it's builder builder eloquent builder return builder where created by user ID equals of ID Again, let's check that if auth check, then we'll return it. Okay, final thing here is this function should be static. I almost forgot. And now uh, this should filter any query by hotels by user ID. So let's refresh our page with hotels list. So currently we have five hotels, but only one of them is with our user. Let's refresh. And we should see only one, uh, as you can see. So now, even if I try to launch hotels one, for example, I would get probably 404. Yep, 404. So I don't have access to any hotel which I haven't uh, launched myself, haven't edited myself. So, but if I change that to create by user ID two, like for example, this is my hotel, then I do access that probably. Yep, it is working. So. And in the list, there should be two entries now. So let's assign Radisson's to, to user ID 2 and Hilton's to user ID 3, which is different. So now we have filtered the entries uh, and the observer works. Uh, now, uh, what I wanted to show you later is um, make it more flexible. So now we need to add it to bookings. So booking should be also filterable by user. So if we do it the same way as hotels, we do create by user ID, then we do the observer, and then we do a boot method in the model. So three things, right? What if we add a trade that it, it would work for any amount of models? And this is exactly what we will do. So we will add a trade uh, app. Let's make a folder called trade, trades. <clears throat> and then let's add a trade like uh, filter by or create uh, actually let's call it multi-tenantable and then we will make different models that we want multi-tenantable so trade multi-tenantable uh, and then we add a met method called boot uh, boot multi-tenantable it will actually serve as kind of a, a constructor to that uh, trade if you will and then instead of doing uh, this, we will do the same thing in a trade. So actually, we will copy static add global scope. So that's on on query static add global scope. And let's make it more flexible. Rename the scope name to be created by user ID for any model. And also, we need to add builder to the to the use section or actually use I think 
this will be more elegant use builder and then builder here okay uh, that should be good and then also we can add the same thing on static created or in fact creating function creating function model this is a little different syntax than uh, observer but it will do the same thing so created by user id will equal auth id uh, and let's wrap that all with if auth check to avoid misunderstandings of check then we do both thing so we copied both things uh, this is from observer and this is from model boot global scope and let's delete them both from here so we don't need boot model anymore and we don't need uh, global scope in uh, observer so app service provider we don't need that observer anymore because it will be served by trait and those two are not needed. Uh, what we need to do is to add multi-tenantable trait to our uh, hotel model. So we use multi-tenantable and then multi-tenantable. And probably we need to add uh, namespace namespace app traits list of hotels trade multi-tenantable not found of course because it should be multi-tenantable with app traits now it has namespace let's launch that again forward static called boot multi-tenantable of course uh, it should be static public static next and we have our three hotels so it works let's try to add number four and let's see if creating actually works creating works we have four hotels out of six I think in the database so total we have six but only four of them are visible to us and now if we want to add multi-tenancy to bookings all we need to do is well create the field create created by ID uh, actually let's do it again so PHP artisan artisan make migration add created by user ID to bookings table So that is again the migration created to bookings table. We will copy and paste the whole code here because it's the same. So created by user ID. Also in booking model, we add that to our fillables. So booking from uh, created by user ID here. And also let's add user uh, user eloquent relationship with created by user id field and all we need to do now is in the booking we should add that trait so this model will be also multi-tenantable use multi-tenantable and here multi-tenantable and now let's try to add a booking um, and let's see if it actually oh we need to launch migration of course Artisan, artisan migrate. Okay, we add a field and then let's add something. Booking from time, from date, from today to Friday. We submit. Actually, notice the list of hotels. It gives four, it doesn't give six. So even in drop down, so every query, every eloquent query, every builder query would actually launch that the same filter. So we submit and we have our first booking. But if we log in as other user, I have that in Firefox. Let me open Firefox. Uh, bookings, that's another user. It should be empty. The list, 
is empty because no data is available because it's not my booking. My booking for a user is this one. And in the database, if we see booking stable, that is created by user ID 2. So in this way, uh, I, I will recap now. So we created a trade, multi-tenantable, uh, which does both things that we did before with observers. So we don't need observers anymore. So this should be deleted as well. Uh, and we have a trade. And if we want to make some CRUD, some model multi-tenantable, we just add it here and here and that's it so you can uh, of, of course you you need to add created by user id to all those uh, models i hope this video was helpful and uh, multi-tenancy is a much deeper subject so i think i will create more videos on that like how to create multi-tenant teams maybe we'll uh, uh, review some packages of multi-tenancy so see you in the next videos of youtube channel and please subscribe to be notified of the next videos